On this episode, Christian butchers the word paradigm. Paradigm? No, it's paradigm. Paradigm. No, it's paradigm. Paradigm. Okay, never mind. I guess we'll keep the pronunciation somewhat sloppy. Loose and goose. Ah, good coffee. Hi, everybody. This is Christian from Laserdesk Academy. This is the advanced schmuck tutorial. And we are dealing with a wicked problem. The problem is the UI of the schedule editor. We made some changes which might, which might be controversial. I'm looking forward to what people have to say about, about the UI here right now. We have a timeline on the side. We also have uh, enemies. Uh, we can interact with the timeline using the, the, the mouse. That's good. Um, we can also interact with the timeline using the keyboard. That's also good. We have a bit of a preview. Uh, we have a bit of a UI overlay telling us exactly. Oh, why, why does it end here? That's weird, huh? Oh, okay. I know why. Um, anyway, we have a bit of a UI overview um, telling us exactly the spawning location of the different enemies. That's good. Um, the wicked problem that we're trying to solve is that um, we started out with a certain paradigm that you see in a lot of like UI design, modern UI design, which is kind of like you see what you get. This is such a has become such a natural way of interacting with a lot of UI stuff that we don't even question this anymore. Like obviously, this is what you how you interact with this. Mm, this was a big deal when some you know programs like Word, like text editors, came around. And then uh, some text editors, modern text editors at the time, had like this, you see what you get. And the idea was that when you open the text editor, you edit a page that will be eventually printed out. And the idea was with the you see what you get paradigm is that you, while you write text in a text editor, you already see exactly the way it will look later on when you print it out. So if you change the font size, if you change anything, you know, you will see exactly, you know, text as it appears later when you print it out. And it seems like, yeah, obviously text editors work, you know, that's, that's how, they, how they work, right? But they didn't used to work this way. The very, very early text editors had like this kind of like weird encoding, like everything was like, because, you know, we didn't have the ability to show rich text on a screen. We didn't have the ability to show fonts of different sizes on a screen, zoom in and zoom out. These are like crazy advanced features, right? We just had like a, you know, text-based interface, like a CM command line interface, right? So we could show text on the screen, but it was always the same size. You couldn't see what it looks like while you were editing it. Now, eventually, you know, the paradigm appeared that, you know, we're going to just see the thing that we're editing while we're editing. We're going to see the results while we're editing. This is really great for creativity, obviously. Um, and that's what we started out this editor with as well. We wanted to show uh, like a screenshot of the game that will later be happening. And so we can like edit our formations and so forth. But alas, we ran into a problem. And that problem was that the thing that we're editing is not necessarily visible on the screen. By the time the enemies fly into the screen, they have already spawned. And the thing that we're editing are the spawning events. And the solution for that was like this weird um, workaround, this weird timeline that we have, like this additional UI at the end that we uh, decide that we have that shows us the spawning events so we can see the things that are happening. But now we want to bring back a little bit of you see what you get. I think we want to be able, for example, and that's going to be a big goal here, to click on enemies. Sorry for this long intro, but I want to kind of like summarize the last episode. Okay, so we want to be able to click on enemies. We want to maybe like to be like this enemy. I want to move it a little bit up, down, left, right, retime it, you know. Can't do it right now. I have to like scroll down and find the moment where it spawns. Uh, is it? Oh, this is the enemy. This is the enemy that spawned here. And now I could maybe like interact with it. That's not cool. Um, before we do, there's something I want to, when the mouse cursor hovers over a button, I can't actually use left and right anymore. Because the kind of like the mouse cursor pins the selection of a button to a specific spot. Um, the way we can solve this is we add a variable <coughs> um, that will um, basically, we will add a variable that indicates if the mouse has moved. And if the mouse has not moved, then we're not gonna change collision 
uh, with the mouse. Um, so it's something like uh, old mau 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 mouse x equals mouse x old mouse y. We we can set them to local. Um, something else I want to do maybe here is, I don't do this here, right? Okay, whatever. Um, if mouse x is not equals old mouse x or old mouse y, oh, that should be y. Uh, old mouse y is not equals old mouse y, then Uh, mouse move equals true, and then we're gonna go mou mouse move equals false, right? Just a little bit of code in this do mouse function that indicates whether the mouse has moved. Let's run this. Just making sure that this there's no internal problems here, and then an the update function when we are actually interacting. So this is the mouse button control, right? So we're gonna go if mouse move then. So we're going to put all of this into a big if statement and actually um, if mouse move or left click. So if we click with the mouse, we also want to do this check, but otherwise we're good. Um, so let us, let's see if this even worked. So yeah, I can, I can still select the buttons with the mouse, but now if I leave the mouse over a button accidentally, I can still select, uh, I can still move the cursor around because now the cursor is not being hijacked by the mouse, or the, the, the selection is not being hijacked by the mouse. And if I move the mouse, we are back. And I can also, like now I can select something else, and if I click, then it will click actually that button. That's good. 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 So, um, selecting, interacting with mouse, uh, with <laughs> making the mouse interact with enemies. There we go. Ah. Uh, it's a bit of an issue because I've, I've been actually thinking about this and um, we're doing something that, that is a bit of a, as I already said before, this is a bit of an issue. Whenever you do UI, you don't want to draw directly from the data if that's something that you need want to be interacting with. So you see how here we're just drawing directly from the data. Actually, we have an nlib here. Oh yeah, we have an nlib. Yeah, yeah, sure. But yeah, we're just drawing the directly the MSPRs based on the, uh, on the, Schedule data. So we take the schedule data and just draw sprites based on the schedule data. That makes it difficult for us to interact with it because you know there's maybe a sprite somewhere on the screen and we can't tell, like because we drew the the, the procedure that allowed us to draw the sprite was kind of like really convoluted and we have to like reverse engineer that procedure to find out where exactly on the screen a sprite exists. So. We kind of have to do like a two-step process. Now we have to take the schedule data. From that, we're going to generate a list of enemy sprites. And we're going to draw that list to the screen. And because we have this list of enemy sprites, that will allow us to then interact with that list, for example, by clicking or hovering with a mouse on it. So it's kind of like a two-step process. And we did exactly the same thing when we create like this menu array, which still I don't like the name anymore, but it now it's too late. <laughs> Um, when we created this menu array where we put a bunch of buttons in there and we generate those buttons from the underlying data. And, but that allows us to interact with the buttons really quickly because the buttons themselves know where they are and what data they correlate to. And we don't have to, like when we do UI interaction, we don't have to think about the underlying data anymore. Uh, the buttons themselves take care of that. So, yeah. Long, long, long discussion. First of all, let me let me save this real quick, and let me go back to load, load, cow schmuck. Because there's one function that I want to grab from our toolbox that I really like. And that is a call to function. It's a good function. We figure out it's a good function. It's a good function to have. Let's get that function. Copy. Um, load schedule. And then here, we're going to paste that function in there. Bam. 
uh, we will collide the, mi the mouse with enemies. And for that, I want to be able to, <laughs> to have this collision function for that. So um, let, us, let us maybe just do like, um, let us do like a separate function for the enemy generation. So let's go to something like um, gen ends, generate enemies, right? Uh, just like to have a place for us to play around with the enemies a little bit. And then here, um, I want to, I forgot if it, if it was enemies, let's call it enemies. We're going to create an <coughs> empty array of enemies. Uh, actually, we don't need it here. We, we're going to make it here, enemies. You know what? We're going to make sure. We're going to make it appear here. We're going to make it create an uh, empty enemies array when we launch the program. And we're also going to uh, have this, this function gen ends. Okay, so here I want to gen ends. And all this stuff, I feel bad editing this out. You know what? I'm gonna just comment this out for now. I'm just gonna comment this out. I wanna keep it around because there's some stuff that will not be in gen ends inside. But uh, so we definitely want to recover some of this stuff. Ooh. But for now, Am I am I get taking crazy pills? I'm taking crazy pills. It is it is crazy pills I'm taking. I can't comment this out because of the double. Is that is that how it works? Oh no. Okay, so something we can do here is. <laughs> <laughs> wow, didn't have that problem before, but now I do. Okay, so um, I'm gonna copy this stuff out because we're gonna base our gen ends function on on this, right? Um, right, so we do want to go through all this stuff and we we do want to get the nlib and anilib and everything. Uh, this is not something that we're interested in right now for reasons we're gonna, uh, gonna become very clear very soon and this is also not something that we're that interested. Um, what I want to do now is I want to go add enemies. I want to add a new enemy to our enemies array. And we're gonna add an x position that is gonna be sh x. We're gonna add a y position that's gonna be sh y. We're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna add a sketch uh, property that's gonna be sh. Uh, that's also important. Um, <clears throat> we're gonna add a spr property. Uh, or let's, let's call it s. And that is gonna be... I'm gonna read this. And what else do we need? Um, we might need a collision box. So let's let's go call equals n. Mm, I've forgotten. I have a so I have a little text file that that reminds me of these things. So the enemy data, the fifth entry in the enemy data is the collision. Uh, or or no, I forgot. Um, so it's gonna be like n five. Mm -hmm. Good. So now we're filling this array of enemies with data about the enemies. And now here for e in all enemies do or let's call it n. And then we're gonna go MSPR n dot uh, s n dot x and dot y like a two-step process right first we're going to generate the enemies using gen ends and then we're going to draw the enemies it doesn't work uh oh yeah because because we should make this go away yeah okay Still works, still the same the same process. Make sure that if we select an enemy that we actually see the thing. Right, we don't have any selection brackets or anything. That's something that we need to reconstruct from, from this thing. So um, yeah, let's do that. Um, so we're gonna draw the enemies here. Um, we're gonna go if, so see, 
we had like this whole entire code. We had to do this because we had to draw this while we're drawing the enemy. But now we can draw, for example, all of the. How oh, can you do this? Yeah, let's draw the um, indicator of where the enemy spawn location is. We're gonna draw that underneath all enemies because I think it's 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 like big enough that that we don't have to make sure that that is you know on top of other stuff. Um, it's gonna be you know it's also it's designed to for us to be able to find the center even if the enemy is off screen. So I think it's okay. So we're gonna go to something like if. Um, cell get then. So if cell get exists, then let me get this code out and put it in here. So we're gonna set this. Now, where are we going to draw this? Um, the here cell get cell get cell get. It's a bit long because cell get is a long word and it's definitely not token efficient but again this is an editor very important a lot of people i think some people already made comments like there's efficient ways of, of writing this there's good reasons to be kind of like to hone your practice and make sure that when you're writing code in pico8 it's always already token efficient don't get me wrong but also we can afford to be a bit loose and goose Lucy Goosey, Lucy and Goose. Did I say Lucy and Goose? Lucy Goosey about about uh, about the things that we're doing here. So okay, so let me let me select an enemy spawn. Yeah, there we go. You see, now we see the enemy spawn, and now the the actual the, those those indicators here are underneath everything. So I think this is a little bit better. Okay, so this works, and then if um, then our also, we're gonna afterwards we're gonna draw the rectangle. Uh, so that's here, rect fill. No, wait, that's not the one. That's this one. Uh, copy this and paste it in here. That's the selection rectangle. So if this is happening, then we oh actually yeah yeah. So so see this is now a problem because it's difficult to get from the selection schedule to the actual enemy. We can get from the enemy to the selection schedule. So let's let's do it while we're drawing the enemy. So we're gonna go if n dot sched equals cell sched double equals very important. Then and then we're gonna draw the selection rectangle. Now there might be a good reason to maybe add additional properties to the cell to the schedule, ah, but it's difficult because we don't want to manipulate the we don't want to add data to the schedule array because that is actually our production data. That's the data that will also be in our uh, in our game. Uh, we might add metadata at some point, um, but for now, I, th I think we can get away without the metadata. The metadata is a lot of work. Don't get like hmm. Let's not let's not uh, let let's try to make it work without it for now. So we're gonna all, uh, replace all those variables with data from the actual enemy uh, object, and that's it. So now we're drawing the, all the uh, enemies from the object, and we should have a selection box now. Yes, the box is just bad, uh, because I don't think I copied this part here. There we go. Actually now, can just get this one out and put it directly into this statement, which makes it a little bit a little bit better. Ooh, there's some problem. Yes. Brackets. Okay, good. Perfect. 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 Now, why did we do this? Well, we did this so we can do like mouse interactions with the enemies now. So now the enemies exist as objects, and now we can loop through those objects when we move the mouse. And actually click on the enemies. So let's go to the update function and let us look look up where we do this. So here's where we're moving the mouse button. We're gonna loop through the menu and we're gonna check if the mouse has interacted with something. So we're gonna do something like local mouse or yeah mouse let's go called mouse hit equals false. So if the mouse has has hit something, if there is a collision with a the mouse, then we're gonna go mouse hit equals true. 
there is something there. Uh, so we're going to go if mouse hit, uh, if not mouse hit, then, and now we're going to loop through all of the enemies. I want the UI, the buttons, to have priority over the enemies um, because buttons are rendered, they're drawn on top of the enemy, so it makes sense that they are prioritized when we're moving the mouse. Okay, so <clears throat> we're going to loop through all of the enemies for n in all enemies do. We're going to loop through all of them. Now comes the part <laughs> when we collide a mouse, uh, the mouse with the enemies. Now, let me let me think this through a little bit. Yes, we have an MSPR, so we should be able to just be, uh, this is just going to be n. Now the x scroll, how does that work? Um, how does the x scroll again work? This is a bit of a hack, I remember it was here. So if, yeah, because the mouse doesn't have x scroll applied to it, right? It's kind of like our, like our ship in the game. And here it is. Yes, so we need to set x scroll to x scroll to true. And this is supposed to be the collision box of the mouse. Now we have to, we don't have a collision box of the mouse. Yikes. Uh, let us, we could also make it, make, rewrite it in collision three, we make our own collision function between the mouse and, and, and some object. How about that? How, how about we do something like this? That seems seems like maybe like a good idea. Let's just call it call three, and we rewrite it to to make it work. With yeah 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 yeah, that's that's totally a good idea, right? Why didn't I think about this first? So something like this, we could have used that if we had it before. We could have used that to collide the mouse with the buttons, but the buttons are the data underneath the buttons is a bit weird, right? So let us do the top left. That's going to be mouse X. Mm, we can do it mouse x minus x scroll, right? I think that's good, that's correct. Uh, this is gonna be mouse y. <clears throat> Bottom is gonna be mouse y. And it's gonna be mouse x minus x scroll. Like this. We don't need this part. We do need that second part because that will get as a collision box of the actual the actual enemy. And then the, the rest is collision as we had before. So we're basically like, we're taking the A um, t left, top, right, bottom variables and we dump just mouse X and mouse Y into this. And that should be okay. And we uh, because it's, we always know that the first object, the A object is always gonna be the mouse. We also know that we have to subtract X scroll from this. Good, so if this is happening, if um, call 3n then, then I want cell sketch to be n dot sked. So we're gonna take the schedule that is associated with an enemy and we're gonna select this as the one that is currently being selected. Oh yeah, and then we're gonna, I guess, not necessary right now, but we're gonna set it just like to, to make it work. Okay, it doesn't work. That's okay. X crawl. It's good. It's not too bad. Ooh. Hmm. There is no interaction happening. I don't see anything happening. Should I see something happening? I should, right? Ah. Right. Because of this, we are resetting this. Let, let me let me remove this. Ha. It doesn't work. Because after we selected it. Then we're gonna be picking the one that we selected from the menu, and then see this is a bit of an ish. This is a bit of an ish. Something we can do is okay. So let's do this before we select the mouse. It's gonna be a bit of redundant, but we're gonna do this like this. We're gonna do it like this. I mean, actually. We can do it like this, because if this, 
if the property a CMD is not not set, then it will be nil. So we can just like grab it directly from that property, and then we can do it like here. Uh huh. Uh huh. I I, I like what's happening here. Okay, let's try that. Ooh. See, um, this doesn't stick around because um, we only get that... It gets reset after we move the mouse. We have to... <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> this works. Yeah, but then it resets to, the, to whatever is on the button. <laughs> I see, I see. We could get this out and we can put it outside of that if statement. And we're gonna put the, this outside, just to make sure. All right, so um, the interaction with the buttons, that is only based on, that's only happening in the frame that the mouse is actually moving. Um, and, but the interaction with enemies is happening in every frame. And that gives us this, this interaction that is exactly what we want. I mean, okay, now the mouse can kind of like overwrite the, the buttons here, but that's maybe okay. So you can see now we can select all of the different enemies here and ooh, that, that feels already so responsive and good. This is kind of fun. And you can also see something very important that is also a result of, our, of, of all the work that we just did. Do you see something fascinating here? When I hover over this enemy, you see the spawning point of that enemy, but that spawning point is off screen. It's not where the enemy is, right? Because look, if I if I use the, this cursor here, uh, let's, let's put it somewhere where it's more clear. Right here. Now the spawning location is exactly where the enemy is, but that makes sense because we are now selecting the spawning event of that enemy. And, and on the frame where the enemy spawns, the enemy will be at the position where it spawned. It hasn't moved from that position yet. It didn't have the chance to move yet because it just spawned. But if we hover over an enemy that has already moved down, now the enemy has spawned some time ago. It's, it hasn't spawned just on this frame, it's spawned some time ago. So now the, the spawning position will be not where the enemy is, but somewhere above. And that's really cool because we can kind of like reverse engineer where the enemies are coming from that we see on the screen. This is good. This is extremely good. So now we're getting like into this question, what actually should happen when we click on the enemies, right? We should like, okay, we can hover over the enemies. This is like a very important aspect, but we want to be able to like click and then do something with an enemy, right? Yeah. My theory, my idea here for a good interaction is to have maybe like a drop down menu. So you click down on an enemy and then like little menu pops up that gives you some options to do with the enemy because you know, you don't want just like delete an enemy. There might be different things you want to do with an enemy. Here are some ideas of what we want to do with an enemy. We want to maybe change the enemy type to a different type. We want to maybe move an enemy. We want to maybe delete an enemy. We want to maybe uh, copy, duplicate an enemy, so we have two of the same type right next to each other, right? There's multiple things you want to maybe doing, be doing with an enemy. And uh, I want to give the player an option to, or the, the user, an option to decide what they want to do with an enemy when you click on them. That makes sense to me. Give me an options here. And this um, drop-down menu is also, also, also something that will appear when we interact with a button here with a spawning location. I want to be able to like hear this enemy click on here, now it's being <laughs> deleted, but if I click click on an enemy, like click on this enemy, I also want to show a drop down menu, obviously not directly above the enemy, but maybe here, down here, or maybe um, near where the enemy is right now. Let's do that. So um, let us create a drop down menu. We're gonna create a um, function called refresh we're gonna call it drop. Uh, and then uh, we want a new update function called update drop. This is a, it's a whole new mode. And we kind of, 
I want to have a new draw function because some things won't won't be working the same way when we when we do the drop down menu. So we're just gonna do a completely new update function, completely new uh, draw function. They, it will share similarities. <laughs> it will share similarities with the uh, with the map view. So I will do um, I will use some a common some common uh, functions to kind of like replicate their properties. For example, we're gonna always draw the background. We're gonna also draw the enemies in a drop-down menu, but we don't draw, we don't wanna draw the timeline probably with a drop-down menu because the timeline already includes some, some interactive elements that I, I want to kind of like them to disappear. So first of all, in a refresh drop, first of all, let's con concentrate on this one. So we're gonna do a menu here, um, local MX, my uh, let's put it in the center of the screen for now we're gonna have to figure out where exactly we're gonna put the drop down menu but we're gonna think about it later on and let us create let us create the buttons that we want to have in the drop down menu um, let us think about the things that we want to have in the drop down menu uh, we want to have let's say we have a type I'm not sure exactly how to do this, but um, we're gonna wanna have like a menu option that changes the type of the enemy. Uh, MX is gonna be MX, uh, X is gonna be MX, Y is gonna be MY. Uh, color is six, is, is that okay? No, 13 is, is better. Okay. And that's gonna be it. I'm gonna do put it in double curly brackets because this is gonna be a vertical menu. So each entry has to be it's in its own line, and the way we set it up, we have like a like a grid of buttons, right? So it's like an array of arrays. Um, so if you want to have uh, buttons next to each other, they will be in the same array. But if you want to have buttons underneath, we will have to put each button, which is a array, which is an object, we have to put it in its own array and put that into the, our menu. So this is a bit of a weird thing. But trust me, it will work. So we have type, we want to have, um, what did we say, move. We want to have um, copy. And we want to have delete. Uh, I'm kind of a bit annoyed because all of these are have four letters and this one has five letters. <laughs> I'm gonna think about that later. So maybe let let's add two letters to the other ones so it's at least a nice little block. Um, we just want to make sure that the menu here is like this is mx, this is M my plus six, this is my plus twelve, and this is my plus eighteen. Yeah, just want to make sure that they're underneath each other, right? Um, right, right. So when I interact with an enemy, so there is an actual collision. This is the hover effect. But if there is a click on the enemy, then. Um, we, then, then things are gonna get crazy. We're gonna do a refresh drop. I'm gonna set the UPD. Yeah, we're gonna set draw and update function to completely different state. Like this. Let me set the draw to map for now so so just so we can see something um but yeah let's try that are you ready are you ready for this oh my gosh it works it totally works like we cannot interact with it anyway in fact we lost the ability to interact with it because we replaced our update function but it totally worked um right let us let us now do first a draw function because the draw function is all almost there almost there we can actually delete all this stuff Okay, let us put some, let us create some common elements that we all know that will always be there. Let's, let's create a function called draw 
draw map, mm, draw BG, let's call it draw BG. And that is going to be all this stuff. All this stuff. Should, should I make the enemies part of it? Yeah, let's make the enemies part of it. It's whatever. Like this. Draw. We can separate them if we have ever feel the need to separate them, but for now I'm not that interested in separating them. Um, okay, so draw BG, and then we're gonna draw BG in the drop draw function as well. Now the timeline is something that is I kind of don't want to show the timeline for uh, for the um, for the drop uh, drop down draw function and then but we, I do want to draw the menu and I do want to draw the the mouse position. That's is what I'm thinking. Let's try that. So if I click. Mm. Oh yeah, uh, it didn't work because we have to actually uh, actually select now uh, change the draw function to actually the drop draw function. A bit of a helicopter flying overhead. I don't know if you can hear this. Right. So now we can see we are um, the drop down menu shows up and the timeline actually disappears. And also, I now I cannot actually. There, I, I lose the ability to do anything because we have to actually um, do the update function for the drop down as well. So let's do that real quick. Right, so let's do like a refresh drop. Um, I don't want to be able to scroll in, in this menu. So we don't want to do this. And these button presses actually should be um, controlling the menu. So, so something like this. We actually want to get these. These are from the table editor. We want to actually get grab these. Like this. Um, cur x cur y. Um, this is looping through a menu. Uh, this allows us to scroll through. Them. I don't know if we want to scroll through the drop down menu. I don't think this is necessary. Um, and this clamps the menu down. That's good. Not sure what this is. Um, let us just clamp them both down. Let us, do, let us not do any, any crazy stuff for now. Whoops. Uh, that is the map now. Yeah, we, we want to clamp them both down. Cur x equals mid cur x menu hashtag menu cur y. Well, actually, we're not going to do uh, maybe later on. Okay, I have some plans. That's why I don't want to be getting ahead of myself. Um, I do want to also have um, mouse button control. So let's let's do that real quick. We just need to copy this one. Right? That's just the mouse button control. Don't want to do this. Do want to, do want to have mouse interaction? Um, let's not do it right now. Uh, do I do want to interact when I click? Okay, good. Okay, so if I click, I get the drop-down menu. I can interact with the mouse. I can also use the the keys to do that. This is this is getting good, babies. This is getting good. The only problem is now that. Um, if I click there, the drop-down menu appears in the wrong position. So now we need to add some code that kind of like, so we can position the drop-down menu a little bit better. How about we, um, these variables where the menu belongs, how about these are actually, how about these are actually um, uh, global variables? that allows us to be to calculate them when we execute the, the click. Uh, drop x. Drop x. Drop x. Uh, so we don't calculate them here in the refresh drop, but we actually calculate them when we, uh, when we click. Uh, and the reason for that might be becoming a bit more clear in a second. Right, here's where we're clicking on, on the menu, on the enemy. 
And so here I'm gonna go drop x equals uh, n dot x and drop y equals n dot y. Let's save this, let's run this. So now if I click here, bam, there it is. Oh, not quite what I wanted. Huh. Oh, right, um, minus cell uh, x, x scroll. <laughs> That's right. Okay, uh, there is no x scroll here, by the way. Um, I don't know if, if I should have x scroll. Uh, should we make plus x scroll? Yeah. The only thing I also want to add is now uh, I want the drop down menu to also open if I if I click on the spawning location of the enemy. Okay, so let's do that real quick. So that is going to be down here in um, when we are <laughs> right now we're deleting the enemies. The ed edit n function that is the one. Uh, let me grab the, just the entire code from the click on an enemy and then just put it in here. Bam. Right, um, so um, what are we saving? What are we actually saving in the edit n? We have the CMD sure. Let me get, get the CMD sure. And let's keep, drop the menu where the enemy spawns. This won't work, but we're gonna see in a second why. Um, we don't need X scroll for that. Um, CMD sure. Uh, oh yeah, B. CMD sure. Um, do I have it? Do I have it? I have not written down. I think it should be three for X position and four for the Y position. Uh, I'm, I'm just guessing right now, but I think it is like this. Let's try that. So now if I interact with this button, bam. This is not what I expected. Oh, yeah, yeah, one more thing. <laughs> Very important. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, I know the problem. So when we interact with a button, we're doing the button, but we maybe should also do a return there. This works with when you're creating new things. And yeah, this gives us a drop down menu. Now, do you see the problem with a drop down menu? It's like all the way up in the, that corner losing its religion. Um, so we want to maybe clamp down those values a little bit. So it's like. Um, uh, mid zero. Let's let's make it actually one. Now, what is the width of the menu? I, I don't know. One hundred twenty-eight minus thirty. Let's go like this, and then the same thing for the Y position. So you know the menu doesn't appear off screen. I'm gonna make it as close to the enemy as possible, but not actually at the enemy. Let's try that. Okay, I uh, want to make it two. Yes, this is good. Uh, so this works on the X, but I, I already knew that it would work on the X and Y. This is the one I'm interested in. Okay, so 30 is not quite correct. We want to make it like 27. I, I don't like how... Six point two six. Palpatine has all sorts of special orders. Let's go twenty five. Okay, this is good. Um, right. So now we have like a drop down menu all the way up there in the corner, and that, that this allows us to edit like this specific enemy all up there. Um, no, the menu kind of covers up the enemy. I don't necessarily love that part, but uh, we're gonna see if there's any problems later on. There, another solution would be to make the menu appear down here. Might be a, actually a better solution, huh? Let's try that for 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 a change. So let's go uh, drop. Because it makes sense if your mouse is already there, right? If you click somewhere and the menu pops up where your mouse was, that makes sense. But if the menu pops up somewhere else where you didn't click or when you interact within a button and then somewhere a menu pops up, that's kind of weird. So let's let's try a drop x equals b dot x and drop y equals b dot y. I think maybe that might be might be better. Yeah. I mean, we don't quite 
we have to understand that we're interacting with something that's over there, but I think that makes a bit more sense. Let's try this if we click. When you click with a mouse, we also want to probably, yeah, if we do the button here, oh, every time we do, do a, we execute a button, we have to do a return because uh, we change, we might change the mode and then it will execute the rest of the code for uh, the wrong mode. Yeah, that, that works. Yeah, this is this is really sweet. I kind of like when the uh, drop-down menu appears where the mouse was. That's that's good. That's probably a better choice. I'm gonna keep the code around for the enemy, but for now that is good. Let us move on to doggy zone. That's right, the doggy zone. Mm -hmm. Right, the doggy zone. So the next step is very obvious, and you know what is coming up. Um, we now create like this drop-down menu with four entries, four things that we are want to be doing. And I want to be able to do all those four things. I want to be able to change the type of an enemy. I want to be able to move an enemy. There should be like some kind of mode, some kind of UI to be able to move the enemy. I want to be able to copy, duplicate an enemy, and then maybe move it around. And I want to be able to delete the enemy. Those four things are things that we want to be executing when we click on the buttons. And that's going to be the goal for the doggy zone. Yes, and also we're going to move on to this place, to this area, to this space. At, um, at the end of each video where I say a big thank you and a huge shout out to all the beautiful people at coffee.com who are supporting the show on coffee.com, who are making it possible. And if you want to become one of those people, as always, the address is coffee.com slash lazydevs. And I also wanted to um, showcase another beautiful game by one of the supporters. Um, this was sent to me by Godmail and man, look at this game. It's called Zenith. It's available in itch.io. Um, it was based on the basic Shmup tutorial, so you know, the advanced stuff that we have here. It's a bit more of a simpler game, but it, there's some really cool stuff happening. First of all, it's a kind of like a bullet avoider with some really impressive um, um, enemy patterns, like bullet patterns. That They're really elaborate, those bullet patterns, so I kind of really like that. That's not something that we discussed too much in the uh, basic Shmup tutorial, so it's, it's cool to see somebody like really going uh, all out on this. It also has a really pretty and elaborate um, itch page. There's also some really nice details, like there's a really cool like retro boot screen at the beginning of the game that, that's also like reminiscent of like Commodore, I think. I really appreciate that um, uh, in the game every stage has like a slightly different vibe, slightly, slightly different um, location. It, this is a good example of a very, very simple game that tells a story through the different stages, through the visual design of the different stages that it goes through. I'm gonna put the link down in the doobly-doo, it's on uh, itch.io, but it's also on Lexiloffel, so check it out. Yes, 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 we are almost done with like a preliminary version of our UI. We just want to have to make this uh, drop-down box work and then I think we can move on to the brains. See you next time around, guys. Bye-bye.